OBS plugins are a cool way to add more features to OBS or or something. I don't know. I've done like four of these OBS compilation videos before and I've I've run out of ways to write this intro. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, basically an OBS plugin is a way to add more features to OBS from things like fancier transitions to instant replays to captions, that sort of stuff. So if you're looking for ways to spice up your stream and make it stand out from everyone else, then this is the series for you. So if you haven't seen any of the previous videos before, I'll leave a link to all the videos up in the cards up here and there'll be a giant playlist down below in the description. So check those out, but that's about it. No more wasting time. Let's get into the list and let's talk about five more OBS plugins. Whoa, 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 is this video sponsored? Yep, Skillshare. That's a great segue. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes to help you become a more well-rounded content creator. And every time I do these Skillshare sponsorships, I always tell you about the film and video section because you know, editing is kind of a big part of being a content creator. But I wanna take this into a different direction today. I've mentioned in the past that I used to be a programmer and I get a lot of questions from you guys being like, Nutty, how do I learn how to program? Well, Skillshare has a great class on the fundamentals of JavaScript by Christopher Dodd. And look, listen, I know you guys are gonna be like, what does programming have to do with being a streamer? Well, a lot of the widgets that you use for your stream, including some of the ones that I've recommended to you guys, were written using JavaScript. So you can literally learn how to build and make your own widgets for your own stream. In fact, even though I'm a programmer myself, I actually don't know JavaScript. So I'm going through the process of learning for myself right now. And it, it's, uh, it's been interesting. None of the videos have any ads, so if you'd like to join, click in the link down below and the first 1,000 of you will get a free one month trial of their premium membership. One piece of advice that I like to give new streamers is to create lots of different scenes in OBS. You need that kind of variety to keep your stream interesting and fresh and give your audience something new to look at. But over time, your scene list can get really long, especially if you're using nested scenes, which is when you put scenes within scenes. If you don't know what that is, I'll leave a video up here so you can learn about it. Well, scene tree folder adds this nice little tree view so that you could put all of your scenes together into groups and keep them all nice and organized. This is a feature that a lot of people have been begging to be added into OBS and now it's finally here. So in my case, I have a group of scenes that I like to call my production scenes. And these are the scenes that I actually show to my viewers while I'm streaming. But all these other scenes are just sub scenes or nested scenes that my viewers never actually see. So I can just throw these into their own folder, collapse that folder so that when I'm streaming, I only see the ones that my viewers are actually gonna see inside of my scene list. If you want this plugin, the link is down below. I'm not gonna go through the whole installation process because we've done that in all the other videos, but it's it's pretty much the same as installing any other plugin. But you just open up OBS, click on docs and select scene tree. So this is an entirely new doc. It doesn't replace the existing scene list. So if you wanted to jump back and forth between the two, you can do that. You can create a folder by clicking in the folder symbol, giving it a name, then just dragging the scenes that you want into that folder. You can also put folders within folders. Just keep in mind that the plugin's not exactly perfect. For example, the default order for the list is in reverse order compared to the standard scene list. So I don't know what's going on there, but also it's really difficult to distinguish between what's a folder and what's a scene. So I would recommend that when you create a folder, right click that folder and enable folder icons and then right click any one of your scenes and enable scene icons. So that way you can tell the difference between what's a scene and what's a folder. I'm pretty sure a year or two from now, this plugin is gonna be obsolete because I'm fairly certain that the OBS team will figure some sort of organization for the scene list. But until that happens, you can use this plugin. Now, while you're working on making your scenes look amazing and pretty for your viewers, it's really important that you remember to create a backup. And that's where Scene Collection Manager comes in. This plugin makes it really easy to just take a snapshot of your scene collection so that when you're working on things, if you ever make a mistake, you can easily just roll back to an old backup. So to access this, you just go up into tools and you click on Scene Collection Manager and you should see this window here. So the left-hand side is gonna show all your different scene collections and the right-hand side is gonna show all the backups you have for that selected scene collection. 
So for example, if I wanna create a new backup, I just press this plus button and then press okay. And it's gonna create a timestamped backup that if I wanna recover, I just double click on it and it will roll back all your changes to the date that you took that snapshot. If you want, you can also turn on automatic backup. So if you turn this on, then every time you shut down OBS, it will automatically take a snapshot of your scene collection. So you don't even have to remember to do your backup. But the killer feature is you can export your entire scene collection, including all of your source files, like your media files, your video files, all your images, sound files, everything can all be backed up. If you just select your scene collection, press the cog and click export, you can save this to wherever you want. We're gonna call this one balls. And that exported my whole scene collection, including all my media files. So if I go into sources, it shows all my different sources here. And if I had any filters for all this stuff, video files, it's all saved all within this folder. Super handy plugin. Yeah, this is one that everybody should have installed. Let's move on to something a little bit more fun, yeah? Let's move on to something that your viewers can actually see. In a previous video, I talked about a plugin called Spectralizer, which is essentially a music visualizer. So if you have music, it like, it like dances to your music. Waveform is essentially Spectralizer, except better, like in every way. Yeah, it's basically another music visualizer, not too different than the ones that you see with all those Monster Cat videos, except this one is done live and it has way more options than Spectralizer. Not only are there different animations for like bars and curves, but you could also animate your visualizer around a circular pattern. I really like this because you can get pretty creative with it. For example, you could put your logo in the middle of that radial pattern and then maybe make that your starting student screen. Or you can get the album art of their currently playing song from something like Tuna, which is another plugin I've talked about in a previous video. To add waveform, just right click on your sources panel, go into add and you should see a new option that says wave form visualizer. Then in the drop down, just select the audio source that contains your music. And once you start playing music, it should detect that and start animating right away. Personally, I would combine this with the wind capture audio plugin that we talked about in a video I'll leave linked in the corner up here. But basically that plugin allows you to separate out your music from all of your game sounds and your discord sounds and all your other sound effects. So that way the waveform plugin only reacts to your music and not all those other sounds. Then you just choose a display mode. You can play around and select the ones that you like. Here's the option for the radial pattern if you want the visualizer to animate around in a circle. Just play around with all the sliders. They give you lots of different options for adjusting how the animation looks. For example, if you lower the gravity, it will make the visualizer move more erratically. Is that, is that a word, er erratically? Anyway, if you raise the gravity, it will make the animation more smooth, but ju just play around with it. I'm not gonna pretend like I know what the sliders mean, okay? I'm not gonna do all the work for you. I'm too lazy for that. Let's stay on the topic of music. So the next plugin is called Scale to Sound, and this one will allow you to take any source in OBS and have it pulse to the beat of your music or whatever audio source you want. Again, very similar to a lot of the audio visualizers in those Monster Cat videos. For example, you can add your logo to your stream, add the Scale to Sound filter to it, and have it react to your music. So, you know, whenever you got that, you know, that, that boom boom pow of your music, and your your logo will pulse to the beat of that. You know, the, the boom, boom, pow fit stuff. Or if you don't have a webcam or you're just too shy to show your face, you could make like a makeshift PNG tuber kind of thing where you can just show a PNG of your face and have your face move to the sound of your voice. Whoa, look at me, I'm a cat and I got a backpack on my back. I'm a poet and I didn't know that I was one. All you have to do is to right click on the source that you want to react to any sound, go to filters and add a new filter called scale to sound. Then select the audio source that you want to react to. So it could be your music, could be your microphone, could be anything you want, could be the gunshots in the game that you're playing. And then just adjust the threshold here for where you want the source to start reacting. I don't even know if that was a real sentence or not, but it's pretty straightforward. Anyway, lots of really creative uses for this plugin. Like I said, most people are probably gonna use it as a basic visualizer or to turn themselves into a makeshift PNG tuber, but you can be really creative with it. For example, I've seen someone who has like this airport announcement in their stream where they have this megaphone that appears in the corner that does like airport announcements and the megaphone like pulses as it does the announcement. 
Good morning. This is an announcement for all passengers flying on flight QF69. Your flight has been delayed as the captain is experiencing massive diarrhea. Thank you for your patience. Really, really fun things you can do with it. Just get creative. Okay, so let's finish with a really simple one. This one is called Soundboard Dock. So all it does is it adds a little dock inside OBS that you can add sound effects to. So if you don't have a Stream Deck or you just want to have sound effects bound to the regular keys on your keyboard, you can use this plugin for that. You can access it by going into Docs and clicking Soundboard Dock and just click the plus button and add all your different sound effects to the dock. By default, all your sound effects will be displayed as a grid of buttons and clicking on a button will play the sound effect. However, your audience will hear it, but you won't be able to hear in your headphones. So to change that, you'll need to right click and go into advanced audio properties. And then in the dropdown, you're going to select monitor and output. Now, depending on how you have your audio set up, you might have double audio. So if that's happening to you, you can also use the mute output option. Of course, you probably don't want to have to drag your mouse out of your game to click on the sound effects inside of the stock. So what you can do is you can go into your OBS settings, go into hotkeys, and you can set a hotkey for each of your different sound effects. So that way you can trigger the sound effect by just pressing a key in your keyboard. Anyway, that's the list. Guys, let me know in the comments down below what your favorite plugin was, or just tell me your favorite color. I don't care, just write anything. I just want the algorithm to like, like me better. Also, I'm about to plug like my 80 different socials right now, so don't click the video off yet. Uh, the video's done, but uh, I have things to say, okay? Don't leave. So number one, I stream on Twitch. There's like a 5% chance that I'm streaming there right now. So go follow me there. Uh, there's also Discord. Uh, go join there so that I look popular. There'll be like way more people in the Discord server. Uh, and also, most importantly, I now have Patreon. So if you guys want to support me with money, you can join my Patreon. Uh, not only does it help the channel, but also if you sub at the $10 tier or more, then you get access to some of the widgets that I've made for my own stream. I've now made that available for you guys in exchange for money because that's what helps me make the channel do more things. Yeah? All right, cool. Thanks for listening to that. And I will see you guys um, whenever I decide to upload another video. Have a great week.